This illustration deals with three or more current carrying conductors in a raceway or a cable, whatever. And it's in accordance with NEC 310.15 CIS and CAR 1. The purpose of the change in 310.15 C1 has been relocated from table 310.15 B3A in the 2017 National Electrical Code. Now I'm going to kind of take this in a, a step procedure, but folks, you could do it any way that you want to do it. But uh, if you uh, kind of look at the first thing, look at the conduit uh, in the boxed in uh, uh, kind of uh, dotted area there. First, we have three or four current carrying conductors, 310.15C1. Secondly, you have one neutral that's not current carrying, so you only have three uh, conductors in there that would be considered current carrying. So if that be the case, and I could drop down to item one here, and notice the number 12 is good for 30 amps, THHN. Table 310.15C1 says, no, you're allowed three current carrying conductors in a raceway with no D rating uh, required. So I'd have 100% then of 30 amps would be 30 amps is what the conductor would be good for. But since it's on a, a number 12 and on a 20 amp circuit, then that's all the, uh, uh, it'd be rated for is 20 amps. But although it, it's good to pull 30 amps for D rating purposes. Now, if you wanted to uh, look at uh, a situation uh, where the inspector would want to know uh, how many amps would you have for uh, uh, when you wanted to figure a calculation for short time uh, current rating or long time current rating. Now, this is kind of a rule of thumb, but if you uh, look at that uh, and you're looking at the short time current rating, then you would take the circular mill of a number 12 wire from table 8 to chapter 9, and you'd find it's 6,530 circular mill. The divider that you use there is 42.3. You do your math, and it'll pull 154 amps for about 5 seconds. Again, rule of thumb, if you, uh, you, know, you actually calculated it, 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 could be, it could be different. Now let's look at the quick count number two for the short time current rating, but you're using time delay fuses that will clear faster than five seconds. Then in FPA 70E, you take in the square root, uh, you would take uh, current squared times uh, clearing time, divided by 0 .0084 seconds, and that's how fast a time delay fuse will open. And then you would get in uh, the next bullet. You would take 154 times 54 current squared times the five seconds over here uh, for your clearing time at 154 amps. That's where this come from. 154 amps, five second clearing time. And when you, uh, this new clearing time now, 0 0.0084 into that, you'd have 3,757 amps. Now, 3,757 amps, you say, well, my God, how, how could you uh, have that much current without damaged insulation? Because you clear it in a half cycle, 0 0.0084 seconds. Over here, it takes five seconds to clear it, so you can only put 154 amps on it. Now, that's a good rule of thumb that uh, engineers have uh, used for a long time. Now, notice if you had four current carrying conductors instead of three, you don't use method one, you go to method two. In table 310.15C1, four conductors carrying current, uh, four requires 80%. In other words, your neutral is considered a current carrying conductor. So um, we went through the section you'd look at. So you have to, have to apply an 80% D rate factor. So 80% of 30, you come up with 24. That is still enough amps there now uh, to supply a 20-amp circuit at 24. So you could use a number 12 wire, 20-amp overcurrent device, and you're still in business there, even though you have four current carrying conductors, and that's what these two calculations uh, are designed to point out to you. 
that you can use the 90 degree opacity to derate back to a 60, and that's what we've done right here in this uh, method two that you see there. So keep that in mind that you cannot use the 90 degree opacity except to derate back to a usable 60 or 75 based upon how the equipment is marked.